little bit about yourself. What's your name? Where are you from? Hey, my name is Thomas Bedenk. I'm game designer with Brightside Games. We're based in Berlin. We're an independent game developer. So tell me a little bit about your team. We started out um, back in 2008 as a student team. Um, we took a part in this game programming class. Um, and in order to be, sign up for the class, we had to develop a three-day prototype. You could already go back in time in that game. The main mechanics were already there. Um, and then during the semester, we developed it to a more full-featured prototype. We didn't have boss fights and all those things yet, but um, the main mechanics, the main fun was already in there. What influenced you to make this game and take it a little bit further than just the classroom? Our professor back then was Andy Neal, who is also co-developer of Osmos. He, during throughout the semester, um, told us a lot about the independent game spirit, the independent games community, and he really inspired us to submit our prototype to a variety of different uh, competitions. After the semester was over and we had a pretty solid prototype, we submitted the game to the Dreamville Play. That was already a big success. We decided to also submit our game to um, the IGF 2009 and surprisingly um, we made it into the student final right away. We were in the student showcase. It was really exciting when we first heard about our IGF nomination. Um, we got emails from the media publishers that were interested in taking our game to the next level. And that's also the point where we said, okay, we, we're gonna try this for real. We're gonna make a company, we're gonna um, finish developing this game and we're gonna bring it to Expo A. It was our first time for all of us in San Francisco and it was just awesome to meet all the game developers and everyone who played our game live. That was one of the first times that we could actually show our game to a broader audience and it was great to see them play our game at the booth. That's also when where we made contact to RCP. Um, they are helped us with actually founding a business and doing business development, helping us with um, preparing the pitch and finding a publisher. Where did you get your resources then to grow from a student team to an actual business? Um, actually, when we came back from GDC the first year after, it was it was pretty tough because we still didn't have uh, funding. So um, the good thing is that we got three offices from the university. That was really a great thing, and they also helped us to to try to get public funding. Um, and that's how we got the um, Exist public fund. Okay, so you guys actually were quite lucky in that situation. Um, so you have these resources, you have the office. What happens within this year that you have all of this support? Mm -hmm. um, we had to focus on improving our prototype of Site Squared because we, what we wanted to do is take um, um, an improved prototype and pitch it to different publishers over the year and um, try to sell it so a publisher would um, finance finishing the game. Tell me about the actual moment that you found your publisher. Yeah, it wasn't um, until a year later that we took part in the Indie Games Challenge. That was another uh, competition and this time we were able to go to Las Vegas to the DICE conference. It was um, really nice to like again see a different aspect of the industry um, because at DICE conference there are more the executive people and while at the GDC there are more the game developers meeting up. We got the chance because we were in the IGC to pitch our game to a variety of people from Microsoft, Epic, NBA. And we also had the chance to, to show our game to Ubisoft. And um, they were really excited about it. They, they really started um, to asking us um, what we want to do with this. And we told them that we would really like to um, bring it to Xbox Live UK because we think it's just a perfect platform for, for our kind of game. Um, and they liked the idea and then um, we basically right there got into um, talking about the contract and um, what would work for us and how much money we need. How, how important is it to you to actually be an indie team for example? Um, because you're teaming up with a publisher, how do you still keep that identity of being an indie team? 
Well, the, 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 there's still the, the, the in despair in, in what we do. We, we're basically a bunch of students who wanted to make a great game and we, we didn't want to compete with these blockbuster games like AAA titles. We really wanted to take this innovative concept and, and bring it to people who enjoy playing new things. Okay, so it's actually quite a long time between the time that you started the game and by the time until now that uh, your game Sight Squared is coming out on XBLA in January. Um, how hard was it to put all of this together? Um, it was a long journey developing this game from, from the first three-day prototype over the, the semester final version and then the IGF submission, the DICE submission, and now the final game. Um, the, the basic concepts were already there in the original prototype, but there's so much that goes into refining, into polishing the game, into implementing more levels and designing boss fights that are interesting to play. So it's just a long process and um, people say that the, the last 10% of a game take 90% of the time. and you know, bringing a game to Xbox Live Arcade, you also need to meet a lot of technical requirements. So we had to um, work together with um, Ubisoft and Microsoft and a big testing team um, to make sure that everything is taken care of, that, that you get the experience, the quality level that you're used to from Xbox games. Um, so how was it like working with Ubisoft? How did you still use your creativity and your ideas while working with a third party and their marketing ideas. Yeah, actually working with Ubisoft didn't change too much on how we um, developed the game. We were completely free with the signing. We, they, they didn't wanna, want us to, to make something else out of the game. They didn't try to, to push things that we didn't want. We were, um, so create, creativity wise, we were completely free to do whatever we felt was right for the game. Okay, what do you have to say to those, all those other indie developers out there who are looking for um, motivation to actually finish the game and get it out? Don't try to, to compete with the next Call of Duty or don't try to make the, the biggest um, um, first person shooter ever. Try to do something that you can possibly finish.